The announcement of reopening plans for San Diego Unified School District is offering a sliver of hope for parents whose kids haven't been in the classroom for nearly a year. But we're not quite there yet, and Board President Richard Barrera is joining us this morning to talk about the conditions that still have to be met, this hybrid learning model, potentially starting class April 12th. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? We're doing good. I know a lot of families are uh, anxious to hear from you. So, you know, we're currently in that purple tier status. Vaccine shipments, some have been delayed, causing some sites to close. So really the question many families are asking is how realistic is this April 12th deadline and for the reopening of these classrooms? I mean, we just had reopen SDUSD, the co-founder of that group saying, you know, the carrot's been dangled for a year and they're no longer really counting on the district for much hope here. Did you hear my question or? I, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Okay, uh, obviously for many families, you know, to hear reopening, uh, mm -hmm. they've been hearing a lot throughout the past year, hoping for a reopening. How realistic is that April 12th date? Yeah, we, uh, we're, we're very optimistic uh, in setting that date, and that's why we were willing to uh, publicly set a target date of the week of April 12th. Uh, opening up for uh, students at all grade levels for those uh, students whose parents choose uh, to bring them back at that point. You know, we anticipate that we will have a large number of parents that still will not be comfortable sending their students in. And so we're going to need to maintain a high quality distance learning program even as we are able to open up and bring more students back to class. But we were confident in hitting those targets for two reasons. The first is we do see that our case rates are continuing to drop uh, pretty rapidly. And so uh, to get into the uh, out of the purple tier, we need to be at seven cases per 100,000. We're now at about 15 cases per 100,000. A few weeks ago, that number was 50. So the trajectory gives us a lot of confidence that really probably in the next couple of weeks, we're likely to be out of the purple tier in San Diego County. And also what we're very uh, encouraged about is that the County Board of Supervisors, uh, led by uh, Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, have committed to beginning on Monday, making vaccines available to our educators, to our school employees. And so we believe that if we can begin getting our educators in to get vaccinated next week, uh, and we continue to see these case rates decline at the rates that they are, uh, we will be able to uh, open up our schools to students at all grade levels that week of April 12th. Yeah, you touched on it. Teachers joining food and ag and emergency workers and cops and everything uh, when this next tier of vaccines opens up on March 1st. But any insight on whether teachers will be prioritized in that group? And furthermore, uh, News 8 viewer Kaylee Arnold uh, asking if teachers already doing in-person learning will get bumped up in the vaccine priority. Any insight on that? Well, so, and, and thank you for asking. We do have uh, a number of, of our school employees who have been on campus now for months and have been coming in every day. And we now are up to uh, close to 5,000 students who are coming in on campus. And that's our uh, group of uh, our most vulnerable students, our uh, homeless students, students with special needs, English learners, students whose teachers identify as needing uh, in-person support right now, um, and we're rapidly expanding that program. So we do have a growing number of students who are already on campus, and of course we have a, a, a number of uh, teachers and other staff members who are on our campus campuses working with those students. Uh, the key to being able to get all of the educators who are necessary for in-person learning vaccinated by that week of April 12th so students can come in. Uh, the key to that is that the supply increases. Uh, the county has the infrastructure and is working with UCSD. We're working with them. Um, we're very confident that once that supply becomes available, we'll be able to administer uh, those vaccines to all of our educators. And what we're expecting and what we're optimistic about is that the increase in supply of vaccines coming into the county uh, is projected to increase over the first uh, couple of weeks of March. 
So um, we're anticipating a larger supply coming in and then our ability to administer uh, those vaccines to our educators, we have the infrastructure ready to go for that. I know we are out of time. I do have an important question though. Why hybrid? If we're doing all of the safety measures, vaccinating teachers, why not right. full time? One of the uh, most important safety measures that is universally agreed to by uh, scientific experts is you need to keep students in small groups. You cannot have full class sizes right now. So, you know, we are hoping that by the fall, we'll be able to uh, return, you know, full day, uh, full week. But right now, because you have to keep students in small groups, that requires you to do things like, you know, morning and afternoon schedules or, you know, a couple of days a week for half the class and a couple of days a week for the other half of the class. You have to keep that group of students small. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Richard. Mm -hmm.